Thank you, Cedric, and, and thank you, Ulf and, and Dan, for your uh, excellent introductions. And, and um, I'm very happy to, to be here and to participate at the launch of, of this uh, Nordic Baltic Climate Peace and, and Security Network. I think it's, a, it's an important milestone uh, in, in this work. And of course, climate change is already transforming and redefining the global security landscape. Lasting security cannot be achieved uh, without addressing the climate crisis. Global stability, human development, and future prosperity depend on our collective response to climate change. The impacts of climate change are not evenly distributed. Poor and vulnerable populations are dispro disproportionately affected. In some countries, climate change intersects with other uh, factors for env environmental degradation and creates new vulnerabilities, exacerbating ex existing risks to economic prosperity, political stability, military readiness, food, water, health, and energy security. And the discourse on climate change and security has made great progress in recent years. There is a growing awareness that the human security challenges created by climate change today could become the hard security problems of tomorrow. The International Crisis Group included climate change on its list of 10 conflicts to watch in 2021. For the first time, it included a transnational risk on that list. The US intelligence community's annual threat assessment for 2021 states that, quote, ecological degradation and a changing climate will continue to fuel disease outbreaks, threaten food and water security, and exacerbate political instability and humanitarian crisis, unquote. Climate change is a risk multiplier and compounds the root causes of conflict. We see that climate change occurs faster than most scientific models have predicted. So climate change is making the world more unsafe and we need to act. While climate change can lead to hard security challenges, there really are no hard security solutions as such. So that is why not only the UN Security Council has a pivotal role to play in these efforts, but the entire UN system must rise to the challenge. And as you know, even though there are different views in the Council on whether climate change is a risk to international peace and security, the Council has recognized this in 47 written products, resolutions, and presidential statements so far. The large majority of the countries currently serving on the Council agree that climate change belongs on the agenda of the Council. And for Norway, climate and security is one of our four main priorities for our tenure uh, as a Council member. Furthermore, we see that even the few countries that have reservations are still willing to discuss and acknowledge the climate related security risks in specific geographic contexts. When the mandates for UNFISIP on Cyprus and UNAMI in Iraq were renewed this year, all members supported inclusion of climate change in the renewed mandates. For the first time, the Council accepted this for missions outside Africa. The link between climate change and security is acknowledged in resolutions on the Sahel, on Lake Chad, and Somalia as well. So this brings me to what Norway intends to do during our term in the Council and what we are already, do, are, are already doing. First, we aim to help improve the Council's ability to detect, address, and prevent crises and conflicts before they become a reality. And this is one of the most important tasks of the United Nations. We must enhance our ability to undertake climate security risk and foresight assessments, and we need to concentrate recommendations, sorry, we need concrete recommendations for implementable actions, as I think also uh, Dan laid out in an excellent way. The climate security mechanism, which Sweden was instrumental in establishing, is a key partner for us in this. Second, we will work towards regular reporting by the Security General, sorry, by the Secretary General to the Council. And we will also support efforts to appoint a special representative on climate and security. We must provide the data that can enable the Security Council to consider the climate related security risks in specific country contexts and push us to continuously assess the possible impacts of climate change on all aspects of the Council's work. The informal expert group on climate and security, which Norway will co chair in 2022, will be an important tool here. And this is where we see the primary role of the Nordic Baltic Climate, Peace and Security Network. Third, six of the 10 countries that host the most 
peacekeepers are in areas ranked most exposed to climate change. And we will continue our efforts to include climate related risks and their implications for peace and security as a factor in all UN conflict prevention, peacekeeping and peace building activities. And this means that we must also ensure that all relevant UN missions have the necessary capacity to assess and address these risks. Fourth, we see several intersections between climate and security, women peace and security and youth peace and security uh, agendas. Both women and youth are often disproportionately affected by the climate related security risks, but they can also serve as key agents of change in climate change adap adaptation and mitigation. We will work to strengthen these connections. And operationally, the focus will have to move from the debate, so, sorry, we'll have to move from discussing general climate related security risks to a focused discussion on specific links and pathways in actual country contexts. And all members of the Council have expressed willingness to consider climate related security risks in specific country contexts. And this needs to be underpinned by reliable, relevant, timely and actionable information on climate, peace and security. So the first line of defense is ambitious climate action. And of course, this must begin with the full implementation of the Paris Agreement and the SDGs. However, with mitigation efforts to date failing to curb global warming, it seems clear that climate change will become a greater risk factor for conflict in the future. So it makes sense for the Security Council to play a role in addressing the threat before, before its security implications become even more dire. So we need to shift the, the debate from whether to how climate change interacts with conflict dyna dynamics and how we can address uh, these emerging risks. More research is needed on understanding of the role of climate change in causal mechanisms related, related to conflict and to investigate pathways and intermediate factors. And we urgently need more research and analytical studies to enhance our common understanding. And finally, we must reinforce partnerships with national and regional actors. Uh, the African Union being, being an especially important uh, one, and of course with civil society organizations. So in the end, climate change really knows no borders. It does not respect national borders, and it cannot be addressed by any one nation on its own. So international multilateral cooperation is really the only answer to the challenge before us. So on behalf of the Norwegian Institute of Foreign Affairs, I am very pleased to welcome the establishment of this Nordic Baltic Climate Peace and Security Network. And we look forward to working together with you and the other Nordic and Baltic countries to move this important issue of climate peace and security forward. So thank you very much.